Hey guys, welcome to Tasmania Unearthed. I'm Levi. And I'm Josh. We want to share some tips with you today on what to know before visiting Tasmania. We've found that a lot of people have had the same questions across Facebook, across different forums, across Reddit. Blogs, websites, yeah. So we're like, why keep them all separate? Let's actually bring them all together and share that with you guys. So that is what we're going to be covering in this video today. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get stuck into it. So one of the uh, big questions, I suppose, is how you can sort of get to Tasmania. And primarily there are two options. You can either choose to come on the Spirit of Tasmania or you can fly into either Launceston or Hobart. There are a couple of airports, but certainly Hobart and Launceston are the main ones. Why would I choose to come to Hobart or Launceston over the other ones primarily? Uh, probably just starting point, like more than anything. There's not necessarily like a, a huge advantage either way. It probably just depends on how you want to tackle your trip, I suppose. It can be a little bit probably, and probably price is a factor as well. Like some airports might be cheaper at different times and that can sort of be an influencing factor and potentially like car rental options as well. There's no yes or no answer necessarily to either option. And do I need to come in to Launceston and leave from Launceston or would it sometimes be a good idea to come into Lonnie and then leave from Hobart? I think you could absolutely do either way. If you were to go fly into Launceston, out of Launceston, just means you can actually tackle the full lap and get, I guess, the full Tasmanian experience. And I could do the same in Hobart. If I want to do the whole lap of Tassie, start in Hobart, finish in Hobart. But if I want to maybe only cover a portion, mm -hmm. I guess I might start in Hobart, fly up to Launceston, yeah. and then leave from there. That way I don't have to backtrack. Certainly if you're doing like a shorter trip, you know, say you've got a weekend or whatever, like might be worth just flying into Hobart and then flying back out of Hobart as well. You said there were two ways to get to Tassie. The first was flying. What's the second way? Spirit of Tasmania. Um, our unique ferry experience coming in now from uh, Geelong as of late 2023. You can spout a like sort of nine to 11 hour sail or thereabouts. So yep, heading into Geelong in Melbourne and then sort of overnight, there are day sailings as well, but you know, typically most people um, sort of do that trip overnight into Devonport, which is about oh, an hour and a half from Launceston thereabouts. Yeah, around about, um, especially with Roadworks. Recently, Roadworks, they're everywhere. So if, I think Google is taking this into account when it gives you how long it's going to take, but probably tack on an extra half an hour just to be safe because it sucks. Stacks you, of it going on at the moment. Yeah, so <laughs> much. Um, by the time they're done, they've got another round of roadworks lined up. So yeah, that's coming from Devonport, coming on the Spirit. Now, when you're on the Spirit, is there anything to expect? Like one thing personally, I'm like, there's no real luggage restrictions when you're bringing your own car. And I think that would probably be the primary reason to take the Spirit, in my opinion, is bringing your own vehicle. If, if you're looking you, at doing a longer trip, yeah, no question the money you can potentially save on car rental and particularly for people looking at traveling for probably a couple of months bring your own caravan you know some huge opportunity obviously to save on you know potentially accommodation over that period definitely a good way to go in terms of bringing food over i know that we have some like border control in a sense like there's restrictions on food and what we can bring quarantine and stuff um, yeah mm -hmm. what can we expect in that capacity if someone is bringing over their own vehicle the cute little beagle brigade that's for sure okay nice <laughs> good old sniffer dog um as you start to come in speaking of which we're gonna have one make hey. the to come here bud a um, little old beagle friend here <laughs> Just in time, we didn't plan it, I promise. <laughs> yeah, list of things to like sort of avoid bringing over, I suppose. Fresh fruit, uh, veggies, dairy, eggs, meat, nuts, fruits. Yeah, just the sorts of things that potentially can, you know, carry some diseases that I guess we're working pretty hard to keep out of the state. So yeah, yeah just keep those into account if you're, you know, packaging food. That's the spirit. Well, we've got actually one more thing. You do probably want to be booking in advance. How far in advance for that? You'd probably want to at least consider six months, particularly if you're looking at bringing caravans over and particularly over peak periods like summer and a lot of sort of people make the, the effort to come over at Easter as well so be thinking well in advance yeah, and gives you the, I guess the confidence you've got a book and plenty of time to think about the rest of your trip as well. Yeah and if you're planning on doing a road trip with your own vehicle within the next six months pause the video go and look <laughs> at the spirit right now and just check if it's actually available because that might change your whole trip. If it is available awesome try to lock that in ASAP. 
The other thing would be potentially for those that are prone to seasickness, some sort of seasickness tablet as well. I think for the most part, people are okay, but there can be a couple of uh, hairy sailings. So there's a chance, probably carry some just in case. So that pretty much covers our two ways of getting to Tasmania, flying and on the spirit. What do we want to tackle next? I think actually unpacking the trip and actually beginning to piece that together. I think this we've talked probably a little bit about having a car. So, I've, you know, obviously if you bring the spirit down, you've actually already got that part of your trip sorted. However, if you are looking to, to fly down, I would suggest Tasmania is definitely one of those places where you, you need to have a car. Public transport is probably not a strong point. Um, we do have obviously things like Uber and taxis and some public transport, but it's probably not a strong point for Hobart and Tasmania in general, I'd suggest. It's not as if we don't have anything. Um, we've got buses and so many people commute to work. And we have one ferry from the Eastern Shore over, which can be fun to take if you just need to go back and forth. But generally within the city, we have buses, Metro, so you can definitely Google that. We might even chuck a link just to their website in the description. Um, even some link to some great car rental deals as well. True, so if you are looking at getting a car, I would probably recommend if you're planning to do anything outside of the city, it is just so much easier mm. having your own vehicle and you're not needing to rely on public transport and when that's available, you can just go whenever you want for however long that you want as well. Yeah, a few companies, um, well the main company we recommend is Barton Car Rentals. You can also get 7.5% off the daily rate as well. If you book with our code, Taz on Earth, um, I'll chuck that somewhere, a link <laughs> to a page. Yeah, it's just because it's it's the cheapest option and we want you to guys to have more to spend on your actual holiday mm -hmm. rather than spending it all on car rental because no one really mm -hmm. wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Get a car, that's a public transport in the city. Outside of the city, we have Redline, I think it is, and that'll get you from Hobart, Launceston, Devonport. And there's a few options that also go to the East Coast as well. It's nothing like doing it at your, you know, you can stop wherever you want to, you know, explore the sites if you're in a car as well and sort of I guess limited to where the bus driver Definitely. needs to go. Like detours are one of the best parts of Tasmania. You're driving past something you're like, that looks cool, I wanna go see that. But if you're on a bus, you're now just pressed up against <laughs> the window wanting to go that way, but you go in the other direction. Snap so. a photo on the way through. Pretty much. What's it like to drive on Tasmanian roads, Levi? What I've noticed is in Tasmania, point A to point B is not like it is on the mainland. It's very direct on the mainland. Point A to point B might have you going, doing massive loops around everywhere, it's gonna take you a lot longer than you would expect it to based on how many kilometers it says. So 60 Ks could actually take you an hour in some sections of Tasmania. It actually gets quite windy, especially in winter months. There's black ice on the roads as well if you're more in central Tasmania and just consider more time than you think that you would need based on what you've probably grown to know on the mainland. I was gonna say wildlife as well. And yeah, roadkill everywhere. Don't yeah. be surprised to pass by roadkill everywhere. Slow down as well. Try to not drive at night. That's when the wallabies are generally out. And yeah, there's nothing worse. If you've got your own vehicle, um, well, do <laughs> what you want, I guess, with that. But if you've got a higher car, I'd say 100% just try to not drive at night because having to pay for repairs and damages is not something that you wanna not fun. Yeah, be leaving your trip with. Mm. You wanna enjoy. Now, traveling around Tasmania, you're probably going to be visiting a lot of national parks. So you might be intending to go somewhere, not to see a waterfall or not to do a hike, but now you've just entered into a national park anyway. So when we enter national parks, we're having to pay here in Tasmania. Now, what's the best option for us here in Tassie? Um, I guess depending on your situation, primarily whether you're just intending on hiking or you're driving into a national park with a car or a couple other situations that might apply to, visit our national parks website, which again, we can leave a link to, and actually purchase a parks pass. Not that I guess it's necessarily about, you know, rangers trying to catch people out, but anytime you purchase a, a parks pass, it does go to looking after and, and maintaining our, our national parks. Parks, gives you the freedom to like explore without having to worry about sort of you know any any problems that you might run into with ranges or anything like that. Definitely and there is one specific pass that I'd recommend and that's the holiday pass I think it covers it's like $80. Now if you don't get this and you go into a national park twice and get a day pass it's around the same price. So if you're planning to visit more than one national park I would just get this and you can book it in advance even for a hiker and then you just get a piece of paper that you just bring with you you put it in your car as well and that covers you for the whole trip if a ranger sees you you just say hey look parks passes yeah in the vehicle and if they ask questions 
you're covered. So the only national park that isn't covered, and this is a fairly unique scenario, but if you intend on doing the Arthur Pyman Conservation Area, and it's only for people that intend on doing four-wheel driving or um, off-roading in that area, um, that is a separate pass, but that's a, like a, a fairly unique situation. Mm. Good to know regardless, um, because that if that is you, um, <laughs> we might have just saved your bacon. <laughs> So that's National Parks, traveling within Tasmania. I think we've pretty much covered that one off. When you're here, some people say you experience all four seasons in a day. It's can very you, common saying. Yeah, can you elaborate, please? It doesn't matter the time of year. Some autumn, winter, spring, you can experience literally all four seasons in the same day. In winter, you can go from going to work or starting your morning in thermals and jackets and long sleeve, this, that, and everything else, to then taking it off because you're absolutely sweating up a storm and the sun's yeah. out. Can obviously, it probably, you know, steers towards what the the actual seasons are typically colder in winter and a little bit warmer in summer but potentially it's always worth sort of catering to uh, the rest of the seasons in you know in whatever time that you're traveling not that you know need to overpack necessarily but maybe having a few things up your sleeve as well so yeah in summer you probably don't need a puffer jacket but it's very good to just bring one just in case. I'd prefer to have, have a one. a warm jacket or something. Yeah, a warm yeah. jacket. And in winter, the opposite is also true. Like a t-shirt, you're probably not really gonna be needing one, but maybe pack one just in case. Yeah. Um, thermals, I would say bring a layer, no matter what time you're visiting. That's a pretty safe way to go. And then, yeah, we also have a packing list guide that we will link to as well that also covers pretty much everything that you should be packing based on when you're visiting in Tasmania. Now, outside of clothing and what we're gonna be wearing, what else does the weather have an impact on here in Tasmania? Yeah, so certainly like road closures and, and bits and pieces. So now Wellington's definitely one to consider. So on the sort of, I guess the snowy days, there is always a chance that that could be closed, particularly sort of central Tasmania and sort of heading particularly into the Cradle Mountain area that can be impacted by snow. So, you know, driving to the conditions or actually just avoiding altogether if it's not even possible to access, which you know does happen from time to time. So other things or you know, guess to sort of factor um, into your travels as well. Now I love Cradle Mountain in the snow and people still go and visit it mm. all the time in the snow. Uh, now there is the off chance that the roads will be closed. So it's good to keep that in mind while preparing your trip. 100%. Phone coverage, Levi. Mm. I've Thoughts. seen this question a lot. <laughs> I've seen some people assume that we have no phone coverage whatsoever. It's like the Amazon jungle down here. Um, that is not true. We have <laughs> even 5G in most of the state. <laughs> we, we do have technology down here, but there are sections and areas of Tasmania that are quite patchy and you might not get any reception at all. The best place to check that would either be the Telstra or the Optus internet coverage um, map that they have online. It just shows you different sections of the state and and what sort of coverage that they provide. And they would be the two top um, service providers I'd go with, Telstra and Optus. And in terms of getting a SIM card for either provider, I'd get that in whatever city you're in and flying into. Uh, Hobart or Launceston from. So if you're in Brisbane, grab the SIM card there. Um, if you're in Melbourne, grab it there before coming uh, into the state as well. Just a lot easier. And if you are traveling into somewhere like the Southwest, you can still download maps um, and use them in offline mode or even purchase a map as well um, yeah. if, you, if you like a hard copy. Mm. That's probably particularly applicable for international travellers, probably for the average domestic traveller already in Australia, you'll probably find you'll be fine. It's just that definitely Telstra is the, is the better network. Optus is pretty close, but probably not quite the same coverage. Vodafone, you're probably gonna have a bit of trouble, but nothing wrong with disconnecting at the same time, I don't think, so <laughs> good yeah. to do every now and again. Definitely. I think just one more uh, thing to cover off on, and that is just a few underrated places here in Tassie, just throw in a few little, hidden gems. So just yeah, straight off the bat, do you have any places that you would recommend people yeah, to? Yeah, I certainly, my wife and I, like if I guess if there's ever sort of a, and it's probably not quite a hidden gem, but definitely Bruny Island, like yeah. I guess it feels like a little sort of mini getaway, you know, the opportunity to sort of just get away, I guess from home, not being too far away, but also crack of food, some good pubs, plenty of driving you can do, some good little off the beaten track sort of type places to go and check out as well. So that's always a fun one. And I wouldn't 
say we're awesome mountain bikers, but certainly into our mountain bike riding. So places like Derby or um, even, you know, plenty of riding um, in Hobart is good fun too. So if you're into your mountain bike riding, um, and I'm not going to proclaim to be an expert, it's definitely a, a cracker place to come to, to for some, some good quality riding too. I guess two places for me. One would be Eagle Hawk Neck, which is on the way to Port Arthur, which so many people go to. And I rave about it everywhere. You'll probably see it in a lot of the blogs. Um, Cubed Espresso, absolutely love that place. Awesome views. They've just got some really great options, homemade. Um, and it's just the view really that puts it above every other cafe. So when you're going to Port Arthur, if that is on your itinerary, uh, stop at Eagle Hawk Neck as well. There's a few um, walks to do there, beaches to swim at, um, the blowholes also good to go check out. And then the second place would just be kind of anywhere in Northwest Tasmania past, probably like past Devonport. It's a section of Tassie that, because it's so far away from Hobart, I think no one ever makes the trek out there. Um, and it, even if you're in Launceston, perhaps you might only ever go to the East Coast and then down to Hobart or maybe down on the West Coast and completely avoid that. But places like Stanley, Penguin, the road between Olveston and Burnie, just beautiful, one of the best um, sections of road, I think, in the state. The East Coast is great. This is also up there for me. Um, the Nut, I think, is a big attraction and might be one of the only reasons people do go up that way. Um, but there's so much else um, to experience up there. And we have a five-day itinerary as well. Shameless plug to our own <laughs> itinerary. But that has a lot of places to visit in the Northwest. So if, if you want to go and find something that maybe not a lot of people experience, that would be the place to do it, in my opinion. 100%. So I think, yeah, overall, it's, well yeah, worth visiting. definitely. It's a great place, so hope it helped. Now I'd also say, don't be surprised if you plan on moving to Tasmania after coming. I know so many people, they come for a long weekend and they've been here ever since. So it's a beautiful place. We really hope you enjoy it. Yeah like subscribe and just any questions or whatever um in the comments as well happy to come back to you. um any suggestions for like i guess other topics to potentially cover in other videos as well got a few lined up sort of over the next few months so if there's anything that's sort of pressing let us know ask the question yeah subscribe for more content catch you guys in the next one